Now, with all these countries mm -hmm. having dem pretty good democratic elections mm -hmm. and the majority of the people really choosing who they want, which is more, which is different than here. I mean, when when we say a democratic election, there, it's it really counts as as the mass of the people do choose. You have a lot of people still electing, but uh, and participating in the elections yes. and so on, and it's very democratic in that sense. Yes. But one of the one of the things that, for example, is taking place in Venezuela, which is so important, yeah. is there's a big discussion taking place, an actual movement from below taking yeah. place. Yes. Uh, on the distinction between representative democracy, which oh, is what we have here. Okay. Representative democracy, meaning that every few years you get to pick, you get to go check, you know, on a little piece of paper or a computer or a chat or whatever it is, uh, who's going to represent you. And we all know what happens there. You know, once they're in the power, they, they do whatever they want. I mean, you look at politicians that are elected here in the U.S., they, they do whatever they want. I mean, they, they have no real mandate from the, from the people. The only time they care is when it's re-election time, and then they start talking all pretty and making all these promises. But ultimately, they're, they're elected by, by big money, by who has the money, and that's who they actually listen to. That's yes. representative democracy, as opposed to direct and participatory democracy, which is, a, which is a different way of organizing politics, a different way of organizing Can government. Can you explain that a little bit a more different specifically? Way. Absol absolutely. Okay. And this is, there's just the very beginnings of this taking place in Venezuela. Okay. But what we have is, in direct participatory democracy, and, and as, a, as a Marxist, this is something that, that I would support, this kind yes. of a model, where all politicians are directly elected and accountable yes. to the people that elect them. For example, if you elect George Bush, or if someone, you know, somehow he gets in power, uh, he then appoints tens of thousands of people that are unelected, that, do, yes, exactly. that then actually do the business of running the government, you know? He is put in power by big corporate money, or whoever yes, it is. Yes, it is. You know? Yes. And then all these people, the judges aren't elected, yes. you know, all this kind of stuff, all, all the different government functionaries, okay. you know? But in direct participatory democracy, you, these people are directly elected and recallable. Not recallable with an impeachment, a complex kind of archaic impeachment process, yeah. but directly. You know, you've got councils in the neighborhood. You've yeah. got councils in the factory, a workers' council. Yeah. You've got councils in the countryside for that little area who elect who they want to represent them, who they want to go then to the regional council yeah. or to the regional or the city council or committee, maybe a better word, uh, committee or council, uh, or, the, or the, the, the statewide one or the national one. And at every level, these people are directly elected and recallable if they don't do what they've been elected to do. Okay. At the same time, these, these functionaries should not only be paid what other... Uh, what the workers that elected them are paid. Right. I mean, nowadays in government, you have so many sort of perks and bonuses right. and benefits, and and you know, fl you know, a golf trip to Hawaii if you're, uh, you know, you're a politician and things like that, uh, or, or you know, or large salaries far higher than the average wage of a worker right. in this country. Well, we would say, and and this is what they're starting to implement in what they call the consejos comunales, the communal councils in Venezuela, where they're starting to say, look. We want these people to be elected directly and recallable. And, and when you say these people, you're talking about... Your representatives. Your political representatives. representatives. And judges. Judges. At all, all, at all, all levels, levels of government. Of government all levels of all government. It's all, it's all combined in one. And these people... Look, if, if we elect you, let's say, Suzanne, we elect you to represent us uh, from this neighborhood, let's say. Yes. To go represent us. Uh, if you want to have a better wage... Yeah. Then you have to improve our, all of our quality of life. Yes, you exactly. To, and that's how you'll get a better. So you're 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 actually part of of the people that you represent, right. as opposed to now, where you have you know people like Joe Biden who pretends to be a you know a kid you know a little working class tough kid from Scranton, Pennsylvania, but he has nothing to do with with the unemployed people in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and all the factories that have yeah. been shut down, and, exactly. and and all the offshoring and and you know. Uh, poverty and, right. and all that kind of stuff. Nothing to do with those people. So we would say that they have to be elected, accountable, that they not make any more than the average worker. And also, that there should be a rotation of duties. That okay. there should be a rotation of the responsibilities. Right. For example, in, in Venezuela, you have a really amazing phenomenon beginning. Again, I don't want to like 
say that everything's perfect by yes. any means. But where you have, you know, maybe a housewife who was five years ago, ten years ago was literate, didn't know how to read. Yes. Is now... Literate. Literate and the elected representative of a certain neighborhood and is fighting to get yes. money to bring electricity to this neighborhood. I mean, a complete transformation in exactly. people's consciousness, Haven't they taking their lives in their own hands. Illiter illiteracy in, in Venezuela, they have. Venezuela, along I mean, with Cuba, are Hugo Chavez, are the only countries that have eliminated, uh, eliminated illiteracy in the Cuba Western too. Hemisphere. Cuba too. Yes. They use the Cuban uh, uh, literacy program in order to oh eradicate it. And these are poor countries. Why can they eradicate it there yes. and they, they can't, we can't er eradicate it and here? And look at the health The richest country on earth. Yeah, all the things they but have. But so that's this participatory democracy. That's 